So in this video, I, I'm going to go over some of the figures from the textbook. This is all found in chapter 18.4, uh, which covers ATP synthase. And in this first figure, 18.23, uh, we see the, uh, a cartoon sketch of the mitochondria. And this is where ATP th synthase is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane at these points of curvature, the cristae in the in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And the cartoon also points out that uh, as a consequence of the respiratory chain, we have a high concentration of protons in this inner membrane space, and there's there's fewer protons in this um, in the matrix. So there's therefore a, a driving force. It's called the proton motive force. Uh, where there's a tendency for, for these protons to want to get from one side of the membrane back to the inside. And that proton motive force is a consequence of two components, a, a chemical a component, which is just describing the difference in concentration of, of the protons, and then also a voltage component, because there's an excess of positive charge and uh, on the outside and negative charge on the inside. That it makes these protons even more valuable in terms of energy for driving the synthesis of ATP. In the next figure, we're looking at an overview structure of ATP synthase. And this is uh, now uh, the inner mitochondrial membrane. Uh, the, lip, the lipid bilayer prevents charged groups from going across uh, by just passive diffusion. So there has to be a very uh, specific path for the protons, these charged protons to get across. And that path is uh, a, a com combination of this A subunit and the C ring, uh, which is uh, constructed from multiple copies of the C subunit. There's about 10 or 13 of these C subunits. This, this ribbon diagram shows and illustrates the structure of one C subunit. And there's a small little detail here, which is the, which I'll highlight here, which is the, that there's a, a carboxylic acid functional group here, which is either protonated, uh, uh, carrying the proton, or it will be deprotonated and therefore charged. Uh, the C ring is attached to the gamma subunit, this rose-colored object. And we know the structure of that entity as well. And that is uh, turning as a consequence of C ring rotation. And as it does the, the, this turning motion, it interacts differently with the catalytic subunits, which are the, the beta subunits. Uh, we know the structure of these beta subunits, and uh, we can see uh, how they interact with nu nucleotides. And depending on which uh, face of the gamma subunit is pointed to which of the three beta subunits, uh, we get different um, uh, molecular states for the catalytic beta subunits. You can't see the third beta subunit, but it's it's there behind the, the gamma subunit. The alpha subunits, uh, together with the beta subunits, they, they form this alpha-3, beta-3 hexamer. And, um, but the alpha subunits are, are just there for, for structural support. It's all the chemistry for ATP synthesis is happening at the active sites of these beta, these beta subunits. Okay, uh, figure 18. Uh, 0.26 shows an overview of the ATP synthase. It, it's, a, it's now known to be a dimer uh, of units, and they, they, uh, uh, we know this now from, from this new structural method called electron microscopy, which can see things that are very, very large. And uh, here is the A subunit from one of the dimers, the second one. Here's the hexamer. The, the A subunit and the hexamer and the, this connecting element um, constructed from B2 subunits, uh, that constitutes the stator, the part that's stationary. Stator. The rotating part is this C ring and the gamma subunit. That We call that the, the rotor for this molecular motor. And there's two of them side by side in this dimer. Um, figure 18.13 uh, uh, illustrates this idea that depending on which uh, portion of the gamma subunit is pointing to which of the beta subunits, you, you end up with three different mole molecular states, L, T, or O. And uh, it is transitions going from, going from L to T 
to O, which drive uh, the synthesis of, 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 a, of ATP. Uh, L, the L state, uh, you can think of that as the loose state, or the, it, it is able to bind ADP and inorganic phosphate. And it does so in a, in a relatively neutral way. The T state binds very tightly to ATP. And in the T state of the two uh, nucleotides, ATP is the preferred nucleotide. So uh, we're making ATP when we transition from L to T states. But that ATP is held so tightly that it's not usable. It's just a stoichiometric reaction. The, the, the important power stroke of this whole motor is transitions from the T state to the O state. And during this transition, uh, we were able to actually pry the ATP loose from the active site of the, the beta subunit. And this is driven by rotations of, of the gamma subunit, depending on uh, which, which portion of the gamma subunit is pointing at which beta subunit, that, that's, de that's what's determining. And, and this, this is a, cir it's a circular motion, so after the O state, you go back to the L state, and then T state, and then the O state. And it's, it's everywhere where you go from T to O that we, we release uh, the, the ATP. The ATP is being ejected at, at these, these transitions. We know that the, the whole thing is rotating from an experiment that's uh, described here in uh, figure 18.32, where uh, the, on a microscope slide, they've glued the, the, the alpha three beta three hexamer, and then they've attached uh, to the gamma subunit a filament of actin. That, that's so that we have something that we can actually uh, see very clearly. And then the scientists decorated this actin filament with fluorescent antibodies so they could see it with a with with fluorescence microscope. And the way the, the whole thing is constructed, uh, ATP is being hydrolyzed by the beta subunits. So we're driving the, the, the reverse molecular motion. Instead of, if we turn the gamma subunit in this direction, we'd be making ATP. And that's the situation for uh, authentic ATP synthase in the mitochondrial membrane. But here, uh, the, the uh, the, to, to see the rotation, uh, they, they've taken the, the, the components apart and they're looking at ATP hydrolysis and because of microscopic reversibility, now the whole thing is rotating in the, in the, opposite, in the opposite direction. Finally, um, we, we're going to now take a look at uh, the path of the protons. The path of the protons uh, explains why the gamma subunit is rotating and uh, it is a, a combination of this A subunit and the C subunit. The C subunit has a, a glutamate residue uh, right about midway along these, along one of the, the transmembrane helices. And that glutamate is able to pick up protons from this inner membrane half channel. And then after rotating all the way around, it deposits that proton to this other half channel uh, that's pointed to, to, towards the matrix. And that, that path uh, is, uh, is illustrated here in figure 18.35. Uh, protons come into this half channel in the A subunit. They attach themselves to the glutamate, the glutamate residue. And then the, uh, the glutamate residue uh, has to rotate all the way around before it gets to this other half channel. And that, that requirement for, ro for ro uh, rotation to get from one of these half channels to the other one is what is driving the, the rotation of the C-ring and also the rotation of the gamma subunit, which then drives the transition from L to T to O in the catalytic subunits, the, the beta subunits. Cut.